What if you had a friend who knew your entire past? And by your entire past, I mean not as in all the things you shared with your friend, but they knew everything. Like in an omniscient way. They just knew it. So that when you did share something with them, their response was like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Or, I, I know about that. It was never really. It was always, they already knew before you told them. Think about that. If you had a friend like that, who knew every single thing that you have ever done, consider another aspect. What if you had a friend who knew every thought you have, at least when you're around them, that you knew that when you're in their presence, they knew exactly what you're thinking. Right at this moment. No matter what it is, no matter how innocent, no matter how dark, no matter how embarrassing. Of course, those are the ones we focus on. The innocent we wouldn't really worry about. But the dark or the embarrassing or the, or the awkward. And to be aware that this thought just passed through your mind. They know exactly what I just thought. They always know what I think. This is your friend, right? Or, what if, what if you had a friend who, for whatever reason, it just worked out this way, let's say, maybe because of the first two reasons, they planned every aspect of your life. All of it. You didn't do anything until this friend told you what to do. And you usually wouldn't feel right about moving forward and doing anything until you went and talked to them and, and asked them what to do. And then they just said, well, yeah, I already had that planned out for you. So and they whipped out their little book or whatever. And then they tell you exactly what you need to do because this is your life plan and your friend, this is the one, the one who knows everything you've ever done and knows all of your thoughts has a life plan for you. And finally, what if this friend, maybe it's the same friend, could be all different friends, but let's just make it one friend that has all those attributes, also has no emotions. They're kind of like a rock. They're a great font of information and knowledge, maybe even wisdom and power, stuff like that, but they have no emotions, none whatsoever. You can listen to them and do what they tell you to do and, and then things will work out okay. Or if you don't, then you'll be destroyed. Everything will go bad and their emotions won't be affected either way. They just kind of lay it out there for you because they're your friend, your all-knowing friend with the perfect plan. And I, I put that before you just to think about it from an abstract way and also to consider that to a great extent that is conventional religion's concept of who your God is. They rarely seem to refer to him as a friend and I'm sure many people in church buildings have much better relationships with their God than what they are told they're supposed to have. They are told these type of concepts that your God knows everything about you and yet you're going to have a relationship with him as though he's just sitting there while you're communicating to him the things that are great on your heart, the things that you've experienced today or things that have come up back from in your, your life and he's just looking there and going, oh, yeah, I know about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already know about that. I know, whatever. You know, I mean, I know they don't say those words, but subconsciously, how could you not have that view of your God? Because I see it, I see the way people act, and they do kind of have that view of Him. They feel like He's disgusting. He already knows everything. I mean, I'm embarrassed to tell Him anything. You know, I know He already knows anyway. Seriously, when you have a relationship with someone, and you share things with them, your hurts, your joys, your pains, your your whatever, your successes, your failures, you're sharing it with them. You, you're getting to know them, they're getting to know you. These, this is what relationships are. Relationships aren't just, yeah, I know everything about you. That's not a relationship. It's not. And I know it's unique with God, but it's unique with God in a perfect sense. 
So again, to move on to the next one, if, if he knew your every thought, and he's just sitting there saying, yeah, I, I, you didn't have to say that. I already knew about that. Because I understand God can know all these things, but I don't believe he chooses to know them all the time, specifically because he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to hear from the new you, the you that trusts him, that trusts him enough to pour out your heart to him and be vulnerable to him and to be completely dependent on him or at least be in the process of in the, having the goal in your heart of being dependent on him. Maybe you're, you're not. We're all maturing and growing at different rates. That's okay. But if you know that the best thing for you is to be totally dependent on him, then you get it. Just because you're not right now doesn't mean you're failing. Because who can do that? Who can snap their fingers and be 100% dependent on God? We live in a real world here, and we've been trained up in certain ways. And to put that kind of trust in anyone, even in God, is difficult. But that is the goal, and that's why it's a relationship. That's why you're growing. You're getting to know Him. You're getting to trust Him more, and for good reason. Because the more you get to know Him, the more you can see how trustworthy He is. And you may already know He's 100% trustworthy, and it's all your own insecurities that keeps you from trusting him so that said you don't have to wait for him to give you this detailed plan for your life because who could know such a thing anyway and if you're in a relationship does anyone in your life really want to I mean there might be some control freaks in your life that want to control every aspect of your life but do you really think God is a control freak I don't again religion apparently does I believe my wife and I believe religion is a spirit and it does infect people, and people act on that spirit. But people ourselves, we don't want that in our life. We don't want a control freak in our life. Why should we want a God who does that? God wants to go with you wherever you go. He doesn't want you to make bad decisions, but he'll allow you to scrape your knees or, or whatever because it's not the, the perfection of your decision that matters. It's the person you're doing it with. You're doing it with your creator. So I feel confident, we feel confident, that if there's something really, really bad that we shouldn't do, we'll probably understand, it'll be made clear to us, this isn't a good decision. But the thing is, we already walk with the Spirit of our God in us all the time, so we get a general understanding of things. But we're still left with a lot of choices. It's not just one choice. That's not how it works. We, he allows us, because we're people, he's a person, he lives his life, he makes his choices, he allows us to make our choices. And even self-destructive ones if we insist on them. But I believe, because we talk to him and we, we pray to him and we listen, we usually avoid those really bad decisions. Because we're listening to him. But we still have choices. There's not only one choice in everything. And like I say, who could possibly know it other than the voice of God audibly comes to you and tells you these things? I think the fact that he doesn't tell you these things might be a sign that he wants you to live your life and make the best choices you can knowing he's there with you because he wants to see through your eyes he wants to hear through yours he wants to experience things as you experience them as himself he doesn't want to become you but he wants to see through your eyes and hear through yours he wants you to see and hear through his and the emotions part that's so one is really strange to me and again i ask you to think about this i know they won't say he's a rock he's a stone but really listen to what you're being taught about your God. Because there's reasons why we're taught certain things. And if you have a general image of him as a rock, as a stone, as this immovable thing. Because it says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord, I change not. Things like that. And then to put him in that box. Where he is just this emotionless thing that you, you can't hurt, you can't upset. But the Bible clearly states that he does have emotions and we can't upset him. And we can't bring him joy. We can do a lot of things. Not that we have control over him and can, or can manipulate him. It's just that he's a person. Again, he's a person. People, persons, they have emotions. They have feelings. And when someone they love does something that harms them, they don't like it. I don't like it when people I love do things that are self-destructive or hurt them or hurt me. I don't like it. I'm made in his likeness. One of the things I share with him is in that likeness is that I don't like pain. I don't like destruction. He doesn't like it when I hurt myself. He does have emotions. He is not a rock. He's not a stone. He's not the all-seeing mind reader 
who has laid out a map for you that you better find, and if you don't, you're going to go off into destruction, or, or all your plans are going to go to naught because you didn't pray enough, or you didn't fast enough, or you didn't repent enough, or do whatever sacrilege or sacraments. We refute religion. Religion has nothing to do with God. God is God. He's not a denomination. He is your best friend. And he doesn't sit there and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, I know that. He doesn't just read your mind. He doesn't just look up the history of who you are and say, I already know that. He does want to have a relationship with you. The best relationship you can ever have, that God with a heart, a heart full of love, that does have emotions, that does have a general plan for you, and that is for you to get to know Him. That is the number one thing, why you were put here, why you were created. He created you so you can know Him. Think about that. Just real quick before I end it, just think about that. Why would He even make you? Why would He even create you? If you believe that, I believe that with all my heart. We do. My wife and I both believe that. We have come to understand that very clearly. He has communicated to us very clearly. We didn't just happen to come along and now, oh, whoops, there's a God. Let's get to know Him. No, there's a reason why we're here. He created us so He could know us. And so we can know him. That is why we exist. And all this other stuff about the God of stone with no emotions and knows everything, sees all, whatever, has a plan marked out and he just drops the pencil and leaves it to you and he'll meet you later on in heaven or something. That's not it. He's living. He's alive. He's right here, right now, with you. If you want him. I want him. We want him. And that's why we have him. In Jesus' name. Amen.